Okay, so before we get into the watercolor, I just want to put on the screen really quick our um, C.S. Lewis quote that this comes from. So you can never get a cup of tea large enough or a book long enough to suit me. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started with our watercolor. So here we have our different books and our cup of tea and our succulent at the top. Um, in the last video, as I said before, you illustrated or drew it out. And today we're gonna get started with um, that process. So you wanna make sure that you have your paper towel, some washi tape if you want it, um, and your water as well. Um, I would recommend that if you want to lightly remove some of these pencil marks, you definitely can. Um, the main one that you wanna get rid of is this one in the back here when we did the oval for the saucer. You wanna get rid of that line so then it doesn't look like it's even there. Um, one thing that you might wanna add is some kind of decoration to your teacup. You could do polka dots, you could do stripes, you could do um, long lines if you wanted to or going across. What I did over here was I just made um, one line across. It made it super simple. But you can get creative and make that teacup look however you want it to look. Okay, the washi tape. Now this is optional and I'm actually not going to use it, but I did wanna make it optional for those of you <clears throat> who felt like you wanted to tape down your work, you can do that um, with painter's tape or washi tape. So you just pull some of it off and then what you would do is you would tape it down to your surface. And then when you did that, all of the paint would remain kind of in a square and you would have this white outline left after you pull the washi tape off and remove it. So you would have this white, um, here, let me see if I can zoom in there. You would have this white um, line right here all the way around if you decided that you wanted to um, secure it down with washi tape. That is definitely an option. And then when you take it off, it comes off very cleanly and then um, you would have that white border all the way around it. Now I have chosen not to do that because I want my watercolor splashes to go all the way to the edge. Now uh, your watercolor paper will buckle a little bit if, if you do choose that. When you tape it down, um, there's less buckling because you are keeping it down flat. But a way to help this is by putting it under some books or in a book or something like that to flatten it out. Okay, all right, let's go ahead and get started. So, um, you have your art, um, your Sargent Art colored pencils. I would recommend that you take all of them out of the box so that you can see all of the colors that we're going to use. Okay, there are a few colors that we are not going to use, um, but we will be using most of them. Now to add the color straight from the get-go, we're going to take our um, pencils and we're gonna put them right on top of the paper. And <clears throat> I am gonna have this kind of set to the side so that you can see. So at first you are going to need your um, watercolor paintbrush and make sure that you have filled it with water and then set that aside because we're going to come back to it. But for this, I want you to start with your um, brown pencil and we're going to work um, going from the bottom up. Okay, so down at the bottom we have our brown and you're just going to lay it in kind of like you're coloring. Okay. Just stay within the lines that you have drawn for yourself. Okay. And you're gonna draw that in. Don't worry about the middle just yet. You're just gonna focus on um, the book, okay, the outside of the book, okay? 
Then after that, we're going to take our darker blue. There's two blues, kind of like a teal blue, and then you also have um, a darker blue. We're gonna start with the darker blue. And you're gonna do the same thing. You're gonna go around the outside. And you're not gonna worry about the inside, okay? I'm going around my, um, oh, the little um, book part that maybe you would have like the title of the book or at the library they would have where you can find the book, okay? So you're gonna do that. After that, we're gonna pick the green. Now you have two greens. You have a lime green and a regular grass green. I want you to go with the grass green, okay? And you're gonna do the same thing. So all you're doing right now is drawing rectangles and squares. Pretty basic. And don't worry about it being perfect. But there you have your green. The next one is yellow. There's only one yellow, so grab that. Oh, I'm sorry, not the yellow, it's the teal. So you're gonna grab the other blue, the teal color, and you're gonna go around that book. Okay. <clears throat> and then you're gonna grab your yellow. Okay, and you can be kind of heavy handed. Um, I had talked about in the last video about you want your pencils to be light. You wanna be light handed with your pencil marks. You can be heavy handed with the watercolor pencils. Um, now I do have a little bit at the top of this book so you can see it kind of moving back underneath that um, teacup. So I do wanna add that in there. Okay, um, you can do the same thing with the blue book as well if you wanna show a little bit of the top kind of um, moving back. And if it, if it moves back, um, like it's disappearing, it's gonna get smaller. So it's almost like, a, like little triangles over here on the sides. If you would like to do that, that is an option. Okay, and then our um, teacup, we're gonna go back to that darker blue. And same thing. You're gonna go along the outline that you had drawn in previously, um, and then go into the back like that, all right? And then I want you, before you get to the um, top of the teacup, take your black, and you're gonna put a little bit down here at the bottom. Now don't get too carried away with black. Black is very dominant when it comes to watercolor, so just put a little bit there for now. We can come back to that. And then get your blue and do the rest of your teacup. Don't forget the bottom. Okay, and then also go back to your handle. And you're kind of making like an S figure, right? Or an X, it looks like an S. Um, so you just want to go on the out, the outside of it, okay? Um, you do have this line, or I created a line. You may decide that you want to do polka dots or something like that, but I'm going to add a little bit of blue along that as well. Okay, so then lastly, we have our um, succulents up here. And I'm gonna say that you can see that there are two different colors or shades, and most everything looks a little bit shaded, but up here, the first color that we're gonna use is the lime. So you can go around all of your succulents with your lime. Um, oops. Your lime watercolor pencil. Okay, and um, you're just gonna do the outlines of each of these, 
all right? And then um, you can do the bottom of this one as well. Um, and then we will spread that around and then we will add some, um, the different shade of green to it here in a little bit. All right, next you're, you are going to want your, um, your uh, two colors. So you have your orange and then also um, the pink color as well. And this is going to make up your flowers at the top. So this one is the one that's a little bit different from all of the other ones. So you're gonna take your pink watercolor pencil and you're gonna go around those flowers just like so. And remember that we did the teardrop and then we also did a more um, like a uh, sketchy kind of or, or free flow. Okay. And so you're just basically tracing over the lines that you have already given yourself. With the orange, we're going to fill this in with a little bit of the orange. Now you can just put a little bit in the middle of each of these. I'll show you. So it doesn't have to be perfect. You don't have to fill it in like, you know, perfectly. But just so that you can see, you just want to give a little bit of that orange inside of each of those shapes. And like I said, you can completely fill in that space, but it's not but it's not necessary because once we um, put the water on here, it'll activate it and kind of spread it out. So just to recap, you've got your pink and your orange for your flowers, your lime green for your succulents, your blue for your teacup, and a little bit of black. And then we've got our yellow, our teal, our green, our blue, and our brown at the bottom. Okay, so... <clears throat> Now for the fun part, we get to add our water brush. Okay, so let me zoom out here so that you can see. Okay, so I have my water brush and it's all filled with water and then I have a couple other things. Um, I have a plate here uh, that when you are using your water you can put it onto the plate plate, and you're gonna squeeze it a little bit and then you can see the water um, has been activated, okay? You can also use um, another piece of watercolor. And if you don't have that on hand, um, that's totally fine. You can just use a scrap um, piece of cardstock if you have something that's a little bit heavier and the reason is just because of the um, like regular paper won't take the water very well okay all right so I'm gonna squeeze a little bit onto here and I'm just gonna show you both so that you can see it but it's kind of like your palette so if I put a little bit of this orange color down and I'm gonna show you on the cardstock as well so that you can see both and then you activate that paint you can see that it starts to spread around okay same thing over here you can see that that um, zoom in a little bit you can see that that water that the water activates the um, the colored pencil so again I'm just gonna put a little bit down on each so that you can see I squeeze a little bit of water and it activates that color for me, okay? If I want to uh, wipe this off, then I will get my paper towel and I will wipe that off. <clears throat> when you squeeze a little bit of the water, then you can um, get it clean. If you don't think that that's enough, you can definitely dip it in the water and rinse it off as well. Um, but it should work just fine on a paper towel. Okay, so there I have all the orange off. And then I can squeeze a little bit of the water and I can activate the pink, okay? So again, I'm just gonna show you, squeeze it on here. And then you can, it cleans off. So 
then I don't have any more of the pink or the orange on there. All right. Um, so that's basically um, what we're going to do with this process. Now, <clears throat> since we've already applied some of our color on here, then all we have to do is squeeze our brush and it will activate that color. Now keep in mind that you don't want to blend this all together. If you do that, it will get really mucky really quick. So you just want to squeeze a little bit of the water so that you can activate that brown paint down here at the bottom, okay? And if you feel at any point like you have too much water on your paper, take your paper towel, lay it over, and give it a pat, and it will take up some of that extra water, okay? Um, so just gonna work that out. And ideally, you want it to look like watercolor instead of pencil marks, of course, okay? And then you're just gonna continue to move on. Just remember to keep your brush clean. And then with this one down here, you're just gonna focus on the edge of the books. With the other ones, go ahead and fill in that area. So I'm gonna fill in this whole area with my blue, okay? And then I'm going to go to my next one, which is the green. Squeeze a little bit of the water so I can activate that green. Okay, and what this does is it just automatically kind of creates a shade for you. And you don't even have to do that much. Okay, you can see that. I have a lot of water pooled up there, so I'm just gonna dab it a little bit so that it takes some of that off. All right, so I have my green. Okay, and then you're gonna move to the teal. Now, I would recommend that you be very careful because the teal um, and the yellow will create like a greenish color. So just keep that in mind because it is from the blue family. That's a little bit of color theory. If you mix um, a blue and yellow together, you will get green. So even though this is teal, the same still applies. So just keep that in mind. So when you are done with the teal, you really wanna make sure that that's um, that your brush is clean before you do the yellow. So just really make sure you get all that teal out before you work on the yellow. And squeeze a little bit of the water. Okay, and um, I've always noticed that the yellow goes a long way, so leave a little bit of that white there in the middle with your yellow, you could even um, take your uh, paper towel and pat that so that it would stay um, a little lighter in the middle. Okay, and then you're just gonna move on up to the um, saucer. Okay, and don't forget about that black area and just make sure that you keep it at the bottom of that saucer. Okay, we don't want it to venture in to the top. Okay, make sure that you get that all off. Okay, I'm gonna go out just a little bit and then we're gonna do the lime. And you're really just focusing on one color at a time for right now. So there isn't a lot of blending happening. You're just activating that um, color that you put down with your colored pencil or watercolor pencil. Okay. And I'm going to make these all lime. So I'm going to make sure that that lime fills the entire 
surface there for my succulents. Okay, um, this last part I'm going to hold off on because we're going to blend that together. Um, so I did the lime. I'm not going to do the flowers. I'm going to come back down here to the bottom. So we're going to work on this section right here where we have our lines for our um, uh, for the books, uh, the pages, so that you can see the pages. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my pencil and I'm just going to lightly draw some lines in. And they do not have to be perfect. Just take them across so that it looks like you've got um, some lines there for your book. And then you're going to take your, um, you're going to get some brown, um, but you're going to be very light with the brown so that it almost looks like it's um, faded pages or older, older pages. So you can put a little bit of brown down. Activate that with your um, water, okay? And you want mostly water. So you're gonna work that out so that you have quite a bit of a pool of water. And then you're gonna go over that section and it's gonna give it like an aged look. Okay, because you definitely don't want um, it to be as dark as the outside. I'm going to go back in with my pencil and I'm going to darken up the outside of the book. And you can keep parts of it lighter. Okay. And then you can apply some of that brown in here just to make those pages look um, look a little older. All right. Well, now we have uh, another step that we're going to do with that one, but I want to focus on the <clears throat> the rest of these um, a little bit. This book right here, we're going to add a little bit of pink. So if you want to grab your pink and put a little bit down. You can activate it with the um, with the uh, water there. Now, what these two colors are going to do is they're going to blend and they're going to make um, like a, like a peachy like a peachy color. Okay, and I'm just putting a little bit in there. I'm not going to get too carried away because I'm also going to go in with the orange. So I just lightly put some in there. Okay, and then I'm also going to add a little bit of orange. And this kind of all stays within the warm family. They're all warm colors, okay? And th what this is going to do is give your book a little more um, definition and some interest because it's not gonna be so flat, all right? So you can take that orange to out to the sides and leave the inside nice and um, and pink there in the middle. Okay, so it's just a blending. You're just blending everything out. And if you want to add the colored pencil directly on the book, you can. So if I do that, you can see that the pink shows up um, very bright right there. And so when you add the uh, paint to it, you can kind of push it around, push it to the edge of that book, and it just gives it a little more um, interest as far as like um, the color of the book itself. Okay, and it's almost going to give it like an orangey look because it goes back to the color theory and that um, red and yellow make orange. Okay, all right, so I'm done with that one. I'm gonna go ahead and rinse off my brush <clears throat> and I'm gonna work back down to this blue one. So, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm gonna grab my teal and I'm gonna put in some more teal just in between each of these lines. 
and let me zoom in so you can see what I'm doing. So I'm basically kind of putting them in where all of these little uh, markings are in the book. Okay, because remember this spine had a little bit of the texture, a textured spine. And so we're just going to work that in a little bit more. So then when you go back with your brush, those um, spots would just stay darker. Okay, and you just want to work back over them, back over the top. Okay. Um, it's an, the same thing with this process. You can always add some blue onto your uh, paper or the teal onto your paper and pick up some and put it in as well. So if you're a little nervous about putting the um, pencil down directly on the paper, because you can do that too, um, you can definitely also pick it up from the paper and move it over. Okay, all right, so there's that one. Um, for the green one, I'm just going to go in and add a little bit more green on top just to make it a little more defined. Make it very green. I'm going to add a little bit more yet. And as you can see, when I put my pencil down, it activates with the water. Okay? So that, you can see how much of the green has gone down. Okay. All right. And then with my dark blue, it's going to be the same thing. So most of this has dried, so you've been able to give it some time to dry, and then now you're just going back in and you're filling it out. Now keep in mind that um, whenever you look at an object, it is darker at the bottom, so the bottom is going to um, be darker, and wherever the light hits is going to be lighter, okay? So it makes sense for the bottom of the books to be darker. Okay, now I'm going to go back, um, now that this has dried a little bit, and I'm going to take my brown uh, watercolor pencil, and I'm going to go over those lines. Again, it does not have to be perfect, um, and you're not going to be able to get like itty bitty lines, but the idea is, and I'm just going to grab some of that water there, um, is that you are showing that there are um, pages there. Um, now that we've added a little more depth to them, we're going to push it even further and we're going to go in with our um, with our brown and our black. So underneath my book, so just imagine that it's on a table. It's going to have a shadow. So you're going to create that line. Let me move those over. You're going to create that line right underneath that book that's going to give you that shadow, okay? Same thing here. You're going to have a shadow underneath this top section of your book. So you can go ahead and draw that in as well. And a little bit here at the spine. So I've just given myself shadow, okay? And you're going to do the same thing with the other books. So everywhere that there's a bottom of a book, it needs to have a little bit of a shadow because it's resting on top of the other book. Okay. And you can include the tag part um, that, you know, like that's on the library books and things like that. You can include that as well because it would also have a shadow. Okay, so this is all running along the bottoms of the book. Okay, and then you can have a little bit underneath your teacup, and then we already put some kind of at the base of the cup. One other place where we're going to add it is at the top of our S, or I'm sorry, not the top, in the, in the crease in here of the S, and you're going to work that out. Now you can see that the, the black is very dominant, so you need to be very careful 
that you don't get it to you know spread around so much but kind of stay where you want it but you're gonna um, definitely show the bottoms of the book and that there's like um, a shadow there like it's resting on top of the other the book um, that's below it okay Okay, I'm going to add a little bit more blue in my saucer cup. I feel like it needs a little bit more blue here. Okay, and in my S. We're going to go into the the succulents and we're going to grab our darker green so we did our lime now we're going to do our darker green or grass green you're going to focus on the bottoms of each succulent and kind of like like it's a shadow um, down going down into the teacup Okay, so then what that's going to do is going to create that depth as well. And you can definitely like have some green going along these um, these dots here um, as well. All right. Uh, so then the last thing that we need to do as far as like blending is going back to these up here at the top. So they already have the orange and the pink in them. So I'm just going to activate some of that water. And then you're just going to work work that in um, together and it's going to automatically blend the two colors. The orange is going to be dominant. It is going to um, really pop here in this section. All right. Um, I always look over my painting and I want to make sure that I have everything um, covered and how I want it and everything like that. I am going to go back with this yellow and add a little bit more black so that the edge is defined. And that's mostly because it's a yellow book. And so it's just not going to have, it's not a dominant color. So. Um, I'm going around that one. I'm going to do the same thing to this teal. Okay, and just kind of anywhere else I feel like it needs a little bit more. And then I'm also going to go through these uh, pages just a little bit with the black. I'm not going to get carried away, but just a little bit. And then just kind of activate them so that they look more like um, pages there. Okay. All right. I think I want a little bit more here. All right. Oh, I also want to smooth this out. There we go. All right. Feel free to go back in and add some more shadow. If you feel like a book needs a little bit more shadow, like I'm gonna add a little bit more here just to show you what I'm talking about. So if you want your book to have a little bit more shadow, like so, you definitely can do that. Um, it does add a lot of depth when you um, create shadow. So definitely play around with that and kind of see, um, you know, if you want to add a little bit more shadow to places. Um, you can also use your brown for this. So if you're, if the black makes you nervous, you can use your brown. Um, it's a little softer, but it still gives you that, um, 
shaded effect. And see when I go over the, the white there, then I really can get a fun shadow created. Okay, so that's it for video number two. We're going to do video number three where we are going to take our watercolor and add the um, background. Um, so that is going to be a wet on wet technique um, that I will show you. And then we'll also do a little bit of the splattering too, if you can see that in there. All right, so come on back and we'll do video number three.